The Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360 impresses from the moment you unbox this beautiful laptop to the first time you boot into Windows. The OLED screen just looks so dang good. The default wallpaper Samsung chooses really shows off the deep blacks and the crisp colors of the screen. And because of the wallpaper they choose, it gives this illusion that there are no top bezels. This is one of those little details that Samsung's gotten really good at over the last few years. I've seen them do it on their tablets and their phones, but this is the first time I've seen it happen on a PC. Also, hello, I'm Brad. Have I said that yet? I really liked last year's Galaxy Book, so it's not surprising that I like this one just as much. Before we go any further, I wanna thank today's sponsor, 1Password. Close your eyes for a second, think of a password. Okay, now add a number, add a special character. No, not that one, add, add a different one. No, sorry, I meant 12. Great, got it? Remember it forever. Do it 100 more times and boom, you've got online life in 2024. If you wanna make your online life better without memorizing a million passwords, you should check out 1Password. They can do all of that for you and more. Whenever I set up a laptop, an Android tablet, a phone, anything I review, like that laptop that I'm reviewing today, I have to sign into my Microsoft Microsoft account, then my Google account, my Adobe Creative Cloud account, and there are dozens of others just to set up the device so I can test it. So I am constantly going through this process of trying to remember my passwords and entering passwords and usernames and all of that fun stuff, and that's where 1Password really is a huge time saver for me. So before logging into all of those accounts, the very first thing I did is I set up 1Password on that laptop. It's got like a little password plugin that sits right there in your browser, so anytime I go to a website, I can just auto-complete everything, boom, log in instantly, saves me so much time. So whenever I create a new account on any website, I go to one passwords, password generator thing. It creates the password for me. It's super secure. I don't have to memorize it. I don't have to come up with anything crazy. It just does it all for me. And it's not just laptops I'm using. Like if I'm on my phone and I need a password, all I do is I scan my fingerprint, it logs me and automatically fills in the password. So easy. 1Password combines industry leading security with award winning design to bring private, secure and user friendly password management to everyone. All you have to remember is one strong account password and that protects everything else. Your login, your credit card, secure notes, your Wi-Fi. This is on any device at any time. You can switch securely between an iPhone, Android, Mac, a PC with convenient features like autofill for quick sign-ins. You can generate as many unique secure passwords as you will ever need. And they're all stored in an encrypted vault that only you have access to. One password can't even see your passwords, only you can. They're totally encrypted. So even if they were hacked into, no one would find anything except for encrypted blobs of useless data that take thousands of years to decrypt. Right now, 1Password is offering you guys, my audience, 25% off both their individual and their family plans. Click on the link below in the description to sign up for your free trial today. Thanks, 1Password. This year, there are two variations of the 360 degree laptop, which are the ones that I like because they're great for drawing. We have the Pro, which is the one that I have here, and then there's a non-Pro version. So let's check out those specs. Let's start with the Pro first. We have a 16 inch 3K display. That's 2,880 pixels by 1,800 pixels. This is an AMOLED display. Like I said, it looks phenomenal. And at 3K, it's not quite as high as 4K, but that's okay. You can't see any pixels. It looks really crisp. This is also a touch screen. That's really important when you're using some of these drawing applications. And we have a Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. And this also has Intel Arc graphics. There is only one configuration. You can't really tweak this thing, but that configuration isn't too bad. It's got one terabyte of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. There's also a micro SD card slot. And it's one of those slots that's really easy to get to. Some of these you have to use a pin and like actually push the thing out. Here you could just slide a micro SD card in. Really nice. This has a 76 watt hour battery. It has two Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI port, a USB type A port, and also a headphone jack. The Pro comes with quad speakers, which sound really good. And this also comes with the S Pen. So then the question is, is what are you going to give up if you go with a non-pro version? Well, you're getting a lower res screen. It's still full HD, that's 1920 by 1080. It's also still an AMOLED display. This is something that Samsung does extraordinarily well across all their devices. And I know I keep talking about the screen, but it really stands out when you use it. You are not gonna get that Ultra 7 processor here or those art graphics, and you're only gonna get 512 gigabytes of onboard storage, which isn't too bad. Considering you're saving $800, 
dollars to drop some of those features and some speed, the non-pro is a really good deal. If you're looking at this as an artist and illustrator, you are going to have to go out buy your own S Pen because that is not included in the standard version. So that's going to run you like, I don't know, another 50 bucks or so. It's like a MacBook Air, but you can draw on it. The Pro that I have here comes in Moonstone Gray. It looks terrific. It's a very nice color. It's like a light gray. I thought this was the same color as last year's, but side by side, I can see a slight difference. This does collect fingerprints, but it's not like super bad, but you will have to clean it off every so often if you want to keep that pretty shine. Now, what comes in the box is pretty minimal. You have the laptop itself. You have the S Pen. You have a power block and a USB Type-C cable for charging. I did not use this cable, and the main reason why is it's just too short for my office. It's only a three foot cable. That's fine if your laptop is sitting on a desk and your power port is, or your, your power outlet, it's like right by your desk. It'll be okay for me. It's a little bit over. I need a longer cable. I wish they included a longer one in the box. And of course, the reason why I like these laptops so much is that S Pen. It's the same reason I prefer Samsung's Android tablets over other Android tablets. This is a Wacom powered EMR pen and it has really good accuracy. The pressure curve feels great. It's nice and smooth. I, I talk about these things in all of my videos because you're not gonna get weird points or blobs or, or all of those other things that you find in many other pens. While Bubble, non-existent here. It's just a great pen. It's fun to draw with. It feels good. Now taking a look at this screen, it looks like there's a, like a new coating or treatment on the glass screen compared to last year's. It's still a glossy display, which really helps the colors look good, but it diffuses light a little bit. It's kind of hard to explain. Sometimes with these glossy screens, they are really glossy. And when you're sitting in front of it, if you're in a lighter room, you're going to see a reflection of yourself on the screen. And I've noticed that a lot less with this model. Now this is not a matte texture to it at all. Still very much glossy. It doesn't give you any other texture or change the feel of the stylus at all when you're drawing on. Now this is one thing that I do miss whenever I'm drawing on any Samsung products or even like an iPad. You know, the stylus just doesn't have the same grippy paper feel that it does if you're using like a Wacom tablet or something like that. Now the pen here does have a slightly rubbery tip that is going to give you more control. So it's not like plastic on glass, like an Apple pencil that you're really sliding around in and not being able to really get those precise movements because it's just slipping a little too much. You you could probably put a matte screen protector on this to give you that papery feel, but I don't know. That's really taking away the best feature of this laptop, which is that beautiful screen. And as far as the rubber tip, it, it doesn't feel natural. That's okay. It's one of those things that I've gotten used to it because I've used so many S pens over the years. It's not really a big deal to me. Also, if you put some kind of textured screen on this and use a softer tip rubbery stylus like this, it would probably wear through that tip really fast. There are no additional nibs that come in the package. You can buy them from Samsung, but that's something to take note of. Now the S Pen itself is skinny, it's lightweight, it's battery free, so it never needs to be charged. Now as far as palm rejection goes, your mileage is gonna vary. Sometimes I was getting palm mark and accidental lines on my screen as I drew or as I wrote. Sometimes I'd go long stretches and it was just fine. On Android, many of the apps that you use have an option to turn off hand gestures while you're drawing. That's a lot less common in Windows apps. So something you do have to get used to. Now, the one thing I haven't talked about yet is that whole like 360 degree part, the thing that the product is named after. This can sit up like a traditional laptop, but yes, you can take that screen and fold it on over all the way, basically turn it into a tablet or set it up on your desk in tent mode. There's different ways that you can kind of consume consume media on this or use it. Now, because this is a 360 degree hinge, it's not quite as stable as what you might see on other laptops, right? Many laptops have a really like, I don't know how to say it, strong hinge. So if you pick it up and it's open, it's not gonna wobble or anything like that. This will wobble because it is used to being open to that larger, larger degree. You're also gonna notice that if you're using the touch screen, if you're using the pen while it's open, those sorts of things, you're gonna notice that wobble. In some of the marketing, they show people drawing on it while it's set up at like, I don't know, 30, 40 degree angle. Get that thought out of your mind. <laughs> With the weight of your pen, the weight of your hand, you're gonna push this thing closed pretty quick. If you wanna draw on an angle, like like I do in the video here, it's best to pick up some kind of inexpensive stand for it. Now, 16 inches, great size for drawing on windows. It's pretty light. It does come in around 4.6 pounds. It feels really good to draw on when it's on a desk. Now, for some people, it's gonna feel too big on your lap. 
I personally liked it, but I, I get it. 16 inches is a lot if you're just sitting on the couch and sketching. Now, one thing that you are giving up when you like do that 360 degree rotation are the keyboard shortcuts. Once you twist it around that far, it just disables the keyboard entirely. If you're used to drawing in Photoshop or even something like Clip Studio, all of these Windows centric apps that really rely on keyboard shortcuts, you're probably gonna miss a lot of those things, especially if you're super reliant on those in your work. Many of those programs just aren't quite touch friendly. Uh, Clip Studio did recently introduce a great touch mode. Uh, that's available on Android and on iPad. I love it, but that mode is not available on Windows yet. I'm using Adobe Fresco here. It's a bit of a battery drainer. You have to have your power mode set to high in order to use it, but it does have a great touch interface. It does run super well on Windows, runs really well on this device. Um, you can like, as you're using this, you kind of forget that you're on Windows for a while. It's it's a really good program that I really enjoy using on these laptops. That's gonna allow you to like pinch and zoom and two fingers to undo and all those shortcuts. So you're not going to need any kind of like uh, keyboard shortcut or anything. There are like dozens of shortcut devices out there nowadays that you could easily plug into this laptop using one of the many USB ports it comes with. There are also some on-screen keyboard shortcut apps out there available for Windows 2 if you want to dig deeper into that as well. Now the keyboard itself is, is really wide, but it still feels very comfortable. In fact, there is enough room here for them to add an entire number pad along the right-hand side. And here you will find one of the biggest additions to the laptops and one of the things Samsung talked about the most, which is the A AI co-pilot button and I I refuse to touch the thing now the keys are really really flat they're really really small there's almost no travel to them they're like those little chiclet keys but it feels pretty good for this type of thing and it also probably helps keep the device pretty thin now the trackpad is huge it's it is offset it's center aligned and I think the main reason why is they're ignoring like the key numbers on the right and kind of aligning it to the rest of the keyboard that extra room is really nice you know it's a kind of luxurious to have that much space Space, especially when you're scrolling around you don't have to pick up your finger or move it quite as much but one thing I did notice is it was so big that my thumb was often resting kind of closer to the top of that so it wasn't clicky along the top like most trackpads aren't so I relied on like tapping it very lightly instead of just trying to get that click in since this is a Samsung device there are some genuinely useful features here that you don't find on many other laptops at least they're not front and center on as many laptops so if you have a Samsung device laying around like a Galaxy Tab I happen to have several of those laying around you can use the second screen feature that is front and center they've they've pinned that to the start menu it works crazy well as a second screen by the way you can prop up your galaxy tab as a drawing screen on your laptop if you wanted to which is which is cool in theory there is a little bit of lag which you're going to notice it's like not a ton it, it's usable but there's just enough where it doesn't quite feel natural when you're drawing on it and since this display is pen enabled anyway why bother using a tablet that way but as a second screen it's great performance here in general seems really really good now i wasn't doing anything high end with it uh, i wasn't doing anything crazy i wouldn't recommend this for I don't know 3d art or anything like that gaming is probably not what this is for even though when I was playing around with blender it totally works you can do that sort of thing but if you're gonna be doing rendering and relying on larger files and that sort of thing uh, the fans are definitely gonna kick in pretty quickly and you're definitely going to feel that another thing worth noting about that fan is when you fold it over to tablet mode the blower is like on the bottom so that hot air is actually blowing down onto you you know, when you have it set up as a tablet. Then there's battery life. Uh, the battery life here is listed at 21 hours. Uh, I would say, you know, I'm getting closer to like four hours when I'm drawing on it. I'd say you could get like five hours, you know, if you don't push it too much. But overall, these are really nitpicks. I feel like this is a fantastic laptop. I like the last several versions that Samsung came up with. This one follows in that trend of just making small improvements incrementally, just making it a little bit better. And it holds up. They, they haven't done any anything crazy you're different and because of that it's a great drawing experience and it's a really good laptop experience this is an ultra portable laptop so if you push it the fans are going to kick on you're going to hear that you're going to notice that so if you're doing things that are like you know more process or intensive it's probably not the best for you i think it coming default with 16 gigabytes of RAM is really good. That's gonna run any art software. It's going to run it really well. It's obviously not top of the line RAM, uh, but it's, it's not bad. I, I'd say if you're getting 16 gigabytes, you've got what you need. And the fact that the pro and the non-pro, especially the non-pro comes with 16 gigs, 
that's really good. They didn't like cheap out there. One terabyte of storage on the Pro, perfectly fine. You know, obviously you have that micro SD slot so you can expand it. Uh, you're getting a little less on the non-Pro, but still it's, it's solid. You're not gonna run out of space. It's gonna kind of depend on what you're doing, of course. And the price of the Pro is up there, but the standard price I think is really good. And I think Samsung kind of tiering their products like this is great. If you want the high end, you can get it. If you want something a little bit cheaper, it's there for you. And even though I haven't tested the non-Pro, knowing how Samsung does put really good displays and they're less expensive products and really has a track record of doing good quality things with their Galaxy Book line, you're probably going to be okay there. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching this video, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.